So now what we're going to do is add in layer three into the environment and we've created a VLAN or we're going to create a VLAN uh, 245 and we're going to assign it an IP address on each side and we're also going to add uh, HSRP to the configuration for the default gateway for the hosts that will be attached to the Nexus 2248 at the bottom of the screen. So the first step is to add the layer three and uh, I've updated the diagram to show that. And we, we call the, the interface on the 5500, we call it a switched virtual interface. And that just basically takes the form of interface, VLAN, and then the VLAN number. So uh, right, let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is set a checkpoint of my config. And, and this is something uh, that's a really nice Nexus OS feature. Um, it basically lets you set up a checkpoint so that you could always go back to the configuration you were before. So I'm going to basically use this command to set a description and um, and basically say, you know, everything before I add layer three. So um, we're going to do that on, uh, on both sides. And um, that way, if I ever need to go back to the config and undo it, I can just revert back to that config. So now the next thing we're going to do is add the features we need. So, so we need this interface VLAN feature um, and that basically enables SVIs to be configured um, on the layer three module. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then the next step is to actually add the VLAN to the system. And this is done using the VLAN command. Um, so you choose a number that you need and then you give it a name. Um, in this case, um, I'm going to name it as um, you can see right here. Um, just give it a name and we'll call it, um, you know, test network in this case. And in this case, I'm also going to say state active. Chances are that's already the default, but uh, you can never be too safe. But also you could suspend VLAN operations as well. As you can see there, it's active and suspend. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, once you create the VLAN, then you can create a new, a new uh, interface VLAN. And that interface VLAN is the SVI we talked about. We're going to use an IP address on each side. So this is the layer three manifestation of the layer two VLAN called 245. Um, so in this case, I'm going to give it um, 245.2 uh, on this side. Actually, it should be three. There you go. And um, on the other side, I'm going to use dot two. And the reason I do this is because I'm going to use HSRP, configure it later on. And that the dot one is what I want the clients to point at. Okay. Now on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing except this time I'm going to give it the IP address of dot two. And we're ready to go. And I'm going to ping just to make sure we have connectivity between them. Okay, so now we're going to configure HSRP using the feature command. So we go ahead and enable it on both sides. And then once it's enabled, um, we go into the interface VLAN 245 and we add an HSR group, HSRP group called 1. And you basically put an IP address on there and that's the shared address. That's the address we want all the clients pointing at. And also, you have to put in the priority. The higher the priority, the better that means that the, that, that will be the router that responds to the, uh, to the ARP requests of the client. So I put priority 100 on the right side. That's going to be our backup. That's going to be the standby. And then I do the same thing on the left side, which is route 2. It's going to have the same IP address, obviously, but the priority is actually going to be higher. Right, so we're going to use a higher priority on this side so that it wins the election process and, and it will respond uh, to all of our uh, of all of our ARP requests. Now, the interesting thing is because I configured this side second, um, if I do a show HSRP here, you'll see that the active router is actually the other side. 
um, and it's standby router unknown. Now it says standby router is local. And that's important because right now I configured it second. So even though it has a higher priority, the standby router is local. And that means because I configured it second that it is the standby router. Okay? And and basically saying that if I go in again, you can see there's a counter that goes down to, to, for the expiry of the other side, but if it won't change unless I'm able to preempt. So there's a command where you could say preempt delay, give it a minimum of 10 seconds, and then basically what'll happen is in 10 seconds from now, I the, this R2 router that I'm on will now become the, the, the active router. So right now we're not in that 10 second window yet. So we're gonna give it a couple of seconds and then we're gonna run the show command again and you'll see that the active router is the local router. And, and this is important because if there's ever an eight, uh, like a layer three disruption of any kind um, and you need to, to switch it over, um, you still, uh, from layer two perspective, might be sending packets to this router. So you, you want to preempt that if you can. I'm just a big believer in, in having determinism in the network. So if, you, if, the, if the layer three interface comes back up, you want it to take back that. Now you can see the standby routers the other side. The other thing that I'm going to configure here is authentication. And the reason I'm going to configure that is because if you use the default, which is Cisco, um, which is just default config, it's conceivable that somebody could attach to your network and run HSRP and basically become the, the default gateway. And so we want to try to guard against that. And it's just good practice to use a, a different key string than the actual you know, Cisco key string uh, for HSRP purposes. So um, once you configure that, um, now the two have to agree. And when you do a show HSRP, um, the HSRP relationship is still you know, rebuilt. Everything's fine. It's now just using the new, the new key string. Okay, so now what we have to do is configure the actual effects interfaces on the Nexus 2K um, to be access layer ports and put them in that VLAN. So we're going to say switch port mode access. Uh, switch port access VLAN 245 and then switch port host. So let's let's talk a little bit about these commands real quick. The first thing is that you notice that I actually used E100 slash 1 slash 1 dash 2 without using the range keyword and that's something on XOS which is very handy. You don't have to use interface range like you do on iOS. The second thing is rather than saying spanning tree port fast, you actually do switch port host. And that actually is a kind of a macro that tells the, the NXOS that, that that port is a host. So let's uh, go ahead and see the other side here. And remember, because we're using VPCs, the, the configurations have to match. a VMware server um, that I have set up with an IP address and I can ping as you can see it's okay I can ping dot one which is a good thing if I go um, back out of this and I go back into the switches um, you can see that obviously here it's 245.10 is my IP address so I'm going to go back to switches and I'm going to ping down 2.10 and as you can see I can ping just fine okay so let's review uh, so we added layer three in this lab. This is the diagram we were using. We added SVI uh, on VLAN 245. Um, this is the configuration uh, to enable interface VLAN and HSRP feature sets, and then add an IP address, um, dot two on one side, dot three on the other. We added HSRP uh, with the IP address, the shared IP address of dot one, uh, one side has priority 200, one side has priority 100, which is the default. That's why it's not listed. And then I added a preempt delay here saying that if, if uh, for any reason the other side became the master in 10 seconds of, within 10 seconds of coming back up, I would get the, uh, this router on the left would get the uh, IP address back. And we've enabled MD5 authentication uh, using a passphrase. Uh, if you do a show HSRP, Right, we saw that my HSRP password is the authentication string. The active router is dot two, which is the other side. Uh, same thing over here. The uh, active router is local. The standby is the other side. When we added a host, um, we have ports E100, 11, and 12. 
and those have uh, hosts attached to them. Um, this just shows uh, basically the, the diagram uh, in its full state after doing all the configuration. On the interface uh, itself, we added <coughs> port type edge, which is used with that switch port uh, host mode uh, or host switch port host command. Uh, this is basically the result of it, and each one uh, is in VLAN 245 on both sides and the configs have to match in order for virtual port channels to continue working. The results of the interface configuration show, if I do a show interface um, Ethernet 1, 1, slash, 1 2 brief, you can see that each interface is in VLAN 245 and it's up and its speed is 1 gigabit. Uh, 